one. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Kagiyama, and I'd like to welcome everyone here to, to be your own hero. I'm a stage four prostate, bone, and lung cancer patient, and I've uh, been dealing with with it for under two years and I've made great progress and I'm so happy to say I am still here. I am still ready to battle every single day and as a matter of battlers, I, I've got a battler with me today and his name is Bob Calvert. And ah. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring Bob on, introduce him to you and uh, Bob, please share a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do. Okay, well, thank you, Mark, for what you're doing, helping uh, pa cancer patients to tell their story and other cancer patients hearing each other can be helpful. This is what I've okay. learned over the last four years. And as a matter of fact, I'm in the middle of a cancer study right now, and that's part of the reason they do it. So, but yeah, my name is Bob Calvert. I'm 75 and, uh, I, let's see, I spent the last 15 years, I had a talk show for the military veterans, and I spent six years going on missions with the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, but I probably overdid it. Um, last couple of times I came back, zoop, right in the hospital. <laughs> and um, so Tell us how hot it was over there. Oh yeah, that one time, this was, um, this was my first 2010 trip. Uh, we were in the middle of a desert, literally. You couldn't see anything no matter where you look, except right where we're at, which is they had some makeshift houses like they do on military bases back here. And our troops were training the Iraqis on what's called clearing the rooms. And they've been doing this for a while. And I was told this is uh, the final exercise. And all of them seemed like they were going to pass so they could go active you know, duty like we do here. And uh, so I'm on a top of a bunker and it was 140 degrees. That's what I was told. And Say that again. 140. 40, 140. Yeah. And uh, so they told me, uh, even the first trip before that, to drink water all the time. And my first concern about that is you're out in the middle of nowhere. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> and I found out it, it, it just, in that heat, it just evaporates quick and it can do damage inside because that were mostly water. And so, but I had this big jug sitting next to me. And so I'm, I'm filming and I heard, I think it was a Colonel saying down below me, remember the next exercise is live fire. And I'm going, what? Because reporters, that's what they called me, tended to be targets of Iraqis that didn't like us. So sometimes they infiltrated. And so I paid attention to them, watching every movement with the gun, you know, and made a mistake. I got badly dehydrated. And I ended up in this big medical tent and they were trying to send me back, but I had all these other stops that had been prearranged with other units. Plus from there, I was going back to Kuwait and then Afghanistan. So they gave me um, some medicine to take. And basically what it did is it took care of the headaches because the headache was just terrible. I didn't know what else was going on until I got back. And um, I already had a prostate problem before I left. Um, and I was on different medications for years, but no cancer. So I ended up back in the hospital <laughs> and uh, my PSA had gone way up. And, uh, and so they started doing what they call biopsies. You know, where they go inside the prostate, take pieces of the skin. It, I don't know if you had that, but it's no fun. It's like pain city, right? And um, so they ended up doing that with me over a year, I think a year and a half, uh, three times. They decided they needed to know if the cancer had spread inside and where was it. So they did what they call saturation biopsy and that was the worst and that's when we found out that I had cancer pretty bad and uh, then they did a, a body scan I didn't really understand at the time why that cancer could spread 
and they found out that it had spread into my bones, kind of like you, right? And um, so, so it's been four years now. I've had a lot of I've had a lot of surgeries in between, different things that you know come with age, I guess, or doing what you shouldn't be doing. Um, but uh, so I had a what they call a cryotherapy prostate cancer surgery, and I should have listened to my urologist, but there was very few that were endorsing oncologists that kind of surgery for prostate. But I didn't know that, so. Anyway, um, about eight months later, uh, everything just flared up again. And that's when they found out it's stage four. So that's when they found out the cancer in my bones. So I've been on, uh, well, first of all, the doctor at Rocky Mountain Cancer Center uh, told me that they were gonna put me on a regimen of pills, uh, medications, shots, and that they would not recommend chemotherapy because they didn't know where all the cancer was. So they'd have to do a whole body. And he said, that's not gonna work. And he said, so he said, this will keep you alive a couple more years. So I said, okay, it's four years now. They've changed a little bit, uh, different, different shot, different name. Um, they've changed one of the medicines because uh, it was causing me other problems. And, but I'm still here, you know? That's and that's fantastic, Bob. So, when they gave you your diagnosis that you had stage four prostate cancer, what went through your mind at that time? Well, you know, I'm old and I've had all these other surgeries, and so a lot of times I've wondered, is this it? You know, is it time for me to go? So, I wondered about that, but. I figured they've got me on these medications, especially when I went past the two year mark. But then I had other things happen to me that um, in terms of what you feel from it, like I didn't feel anything after the prostate cancer. All the tests they did, test normal, as far as the PSA, 0.04, most of them. And then recently they told me that um, they don't think there's cancer in the prostate anymore. But now they have to find out if it's still in the bones, you know. But but I had COVID too, you know. When COVID hit, you know, old people, people with health problems like cancer, warning, warning, warnings, right? So I took them serious, and I ended up getting COVID in my doctor's office. I found that out after I got sick, but it got me for three months. It was I. I decided not to go to the hospital. I saw how the hospitals were all full and all that, and I survived it. But then I ended up for two years with what they call COVID long. And I already had a breathing problem. I don't know if it's the cancer or the medication, but never that. I had a memory problem. And I eventually I had to stop doing my talk show because I'd get on there and I would just freeze. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know who that person was. And I thought, it's not fair. I can't do this to people. So I haven't done my talk show now in over two years. <clears throat> but we're getting ready to. Uh, but anyway, it caused memory problems. It caused uh, the breathing problem. And uh, a friend of mine told me about this drink. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this lady calls me. Um, I was real big in Herbalife back in the 80s and 90s. And I was one of the trainers and did a lot of the meetings. And uh, we were doing really well back then, helping people become healthy, right? So this lady calls me. I haven't talked to her in 31 years. That's what she told me. And so after a while, I knew she was trying to recruit me. And I told her, please no, I'm not interested. And she told me what this drink was. And she sent me a bottle. And to be honest with you, I didn't believe anything that they were telling me. But in the couple, first couple of days, my energy was back up. It's been it had been down for a long time, and um, my breathing problem. Well, it's two months now. I've only used the inhaler five times, as opposed to once or twice every day. And the memory problem, I actually forgot my grandkids' names. Ooh. That's how bad it got. And my memory is perfect now. You know, normal things you forget, you know, but and my energy's up. And so 
I have veterans I'm calling now because that's what my talk show is all about, military veterans and all that. And people that I've talked to maybe more than two years ago or three years ago, and they hear the difference immediately. And I love it, right? And they'll go, well, what'd you do? How'd you do that? So I tell them about the drink, you know, because it maybe will help them too. But. Tell us the name of it and, and how they can get in touch with you about it. Oh, okay. Well, it's called Numi is the company, um, N-E-U-M-I, and the drink is called Swish. And the reason for that, and by the way, um, just some of the ingredients, glutathione, we're born with glutathione. It may, it's known as the body's master antioxidant, but we're born with it. It just gets low in most people as you get older. And then it opens you up to other problems. Um, vitamin C, L-cysteine, alpha-lipoic acid, curcumin, all of these I've taken in different forms over the years, mostly tablets. They didn't do any good for me. Um, but they made it, um, they have a process called hydrostat nanotechnology. They take all the ingredients and they're able to reduce them in size with the liquid. And then when you drink it, you just swish it in your mouth. That's why they call it swish. <laughs> Um, and it goes right into the pores and right into your bloodstream. It doesn't get, have to deal with the, uh, the, uh, st the stomach and all that digestive system. And I mean, I'm, I'm bouncing off the walls. And so we're, I uh, have a Marine. Um, he's a Iraq veteran. I may have been with his unit, by the way, at a different time in Iraq. Um, but uh, he has his own website development company um, it's called uh, Semperfy Designs. We've been talking for a long time, and I've been trying to find somebody that can help me so the mission will continue even when I'm not here, you know, kind of like a transition. And just over months and months, and then he started calling me, and telling me his ideas, and it's getting ready to be launched now um, as a media network. And it's, it's pretty cool what's coming together here. And, um, and I've interviewed thousands over the years. So... Uh, so I'm pretty excited. I mean, I'm going to be able to do things I didn't know I'd ever be able to do again. Uh, well, you know this, I had my two youngest grandkids over for three days. And most of the times I'd be sitting there. You know, I couldn't really do much with them. And this time we're wrestling. They're piling on top of me, right? I'm getting <laughs> to show them some wrestling moves since I was a kid. And they're just going, Papa, you're weak. And I go, not not so much anymore. You know, I mean, my energy is doing good. Everybody that I know, is, is the first thing they'll do almost say, hey, you sound like you're doing better. So as far as the cancer, I hope I, I have to go back next week for the regular shot, which I don't like the shot. It's, it's, you know, it's where they put it and it's just painful for a long time, but it's kept me alive. So, but I'm hoping they'll tell me soon about finding out about the bones, because if there's no cancer there, I'm cancer free. You know, I get to, I get to wear this t-shirt. I've never been able to wear that says I'm cancer free. So Bob, how important is a person's attitude when, if and when they get diagnosed with cancer? Well, I mean, I was scared. You know, I'm not going to say I wasn't. I'm not any hero or anything, you know, I'm a human being, um, but I've gotten to know other cancer patients along the way like you. Um, and, you know, it's obviously when you find out you have cancer, it's scary. You know, mm -hmm. and, you, and you don't really know what's coming next. Um, the technology in terms of medicine treatments are seem to be getting better and better. I mean, I'm happy that I went past that two year period and I was four. Um, but I, you know, I think the hardest time for me was with COVID because it just, it really got me down. You know, it was a bet you have to fight it. You know, I've always tried to be a positive person. Of course, I did a talk show like you were doing this podcast for, uh, let's see, I did that from uh, 2005, 2012. And you've got to be positive. You've got to be, you know, energetic. And, um, so, and plus I, you know, went out on missions with the troops and can't be down. They're the ones risking their lives, right? So. so. So that being said, 
uh, share with us a little bit more about what talking with heroes is all about. Okay. Well, I started the uh, a video program, I had an audio program back in 05, about a year after my daughter had shocked me by going to the Army. And soldiers near Fort Riley, where I was living then, uh, suggested I start a talk show to give them a voice that they weren't getting. This is what they told me at the time from the national media. And um, so that's what I did. And I did that for about six months. And then I got a call from Minnesota National Guard in Iraq. And they, they, I did a program for them. And the Brigadier General, at, at the end of the program, said to me, Bob, you ought to come over here with your talk show. I didn't really take them serious. But we ended up doing that. I spent five trips to Iraq, three to Afghanistan. I have almost 500 videos on YouTube. Wow. And this is like the last video I did was 2019 at a big veterans event. But I knew halfway through those days, I was not going to be able to do this anymore. That's how I felt anymore, right? And it hasn't been up until now. So, and of course, the Swish product is, this is just incredible. And I get to bring it out once we announce it. Um, I get to bring it out to veterans all across America. And I'm, you know, we you. cannot and we won't make medical claims, but we can give our testimony. You know, and I've been hearing from doctors now with uh, knew me and I'm just going, wow, I gotta tell people about this. <laughs> so how do people reach you about the oh, me? Okay. It's uh new me, N E U M I dot com forward slash Bob Calvert. That's C A L V E R T. Um, on that when the page opens up, there's a two minute video, scroll down to see it, and then scroll down to another one and go back up to where it says shop and they can become a member. And um, with that, they get a discount whether they sell or not, anytime they buy it. They have a skin product too that's, I, I think it's actually working on this old face here, wrinkled face. Um, I was at a pharmacist dietitian clinic uh, last week and I've seen them twice now. And the lady kept looking at me and I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and she said, you've done something to your skin, it looks better. I thought, wow, okay. So I have a before picture in about a month or two, I'm gonna take another one. And then say with my hands, we get wrinkled, oh, we get wrinkles, you know? And so, yeah, I'll put them out there, but I always wanna tell people that we're not making medical claims. So even, even though glutathione we're born with. <laughs> So how has cancer changed you in your life? Um, well, it changed my diet. You know, I was told, and back then I was told that it would be a good idea to limit a lot sugar intake. And of course, chemicals, and I was already doing that, trying to be careful, but never entered my mind to stop sugar. And it was on a lot of cancer sites. Now I'm hearing that um, you can take some sugar, but don't get back to using a lot. Uh, the term I saw on uh, one of the cancer sites was uh, cancer cells feed on sugar. So my diet changed, okay? And, um, and then of course, going back and forth to the cancer center and, uh, and then he, COVID hit. And because I have cancer, you know, that's one of the things I heard a lot on the news. You know, uh, if you have certain illnesses, you know, you need to be ex more extra careful. So I was, but it didn't work. <laughs> so what advice do you give to the newly diagnosed cancer patient? Well, obviously, listen to your doctor. Um, if you need to make changes on food, you know, sometimes it's not fun, depending on what your diet is already. But I think the most, I don't know if it's the most important thing, but it's right up there top, is family. It is, it's family and friends. You know, um, I have friends I haven't talked to for years who remembered I had cancer and asked me how I'm doing. Uh, but family is so important. I mean, my daughter and my son-in-law and, and my Two youngest grandkids don't really understand it, but the two teenagers, I think, do. I know they do. But my daughter and son have been incredible. And then I have two brothers, so it's all mostly over the phone. 
uh, although I was at my one brother's house um, years ago. Uh, he was in Air Force and Army. And uh, yeah, he's helped me a lot over the phone. He ran labs for years, so he has a lot of knowledge about this kind of stuff. But I think that's that's a big one, you know, family, you know, and absolutely agree. That's what that was for you, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, for me, my family gave me the substance and the reason for wanting to, you know, go down this path and, and fight every single day. So they gave me the reason uh, for me. Uh, I mean, I did, I did not want to leave them. I mean, that, that was, yeah. I, I wanted to live, but I wanted to be around with them. Yeah. And you had more than prostate cancer, right? You had lung cancer too. Oh, lung and yeah. bone. I had both. All, all stage four. Yeah. Jack now, when, <laughs> when I, I had, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's shocking to me how some human being figured out how to do all this stuff to cancer patients. It, it, it's just mind boggling how inhumane the procedures are and, and who thought of these things and the way to do them, you know, to do it. But uh, when I was, when I had a, a, a lung biopsy, I actually saw a live scan of my lungs. Oh, wow. Two white lungs. And there were like black blobs just floating around in my lungs. I, and I saw that eye. That's when, you know, that made an impression on me. And it told me that I had to be very serious about dealing with this because <laughs> I actually looked and saw the actual, actual results of it. And, and so I, that just told me, hey, uh, this is no joke. Absolutely no joke. Right. And, uh, you know, I, and I'm glad I saw that. I'm glad, you know, the uh, uh, surgeon allowed me to, to look at the scan because I wanted to see it because they had it turned away. And, and he says, you sure you want to look at this? I said, yeah, yeah. I do. I want to see it. And, and I'm really glad I did because I will never forget that. I will never forget how many black blobs were floating around in my what was supposed to be pure white lungs and then wow. yeah so well, i think it's great what you're doing with this program i really thank do thank you Bob. and we, when we get our new site launched talking with heroes we're going to be going out like mainly military veteran first responder firefighters all related but whoever has podcasts or talk shows or makes videos or, um, during events or something we're going to have it where they can list them, but I want you to list your, your podcast here. I'll, I'll let Fantastic. you know as soon as it's ready. Fantastic, Bob. You know, every any segment of the population can have cancer. Yes. You know, it could be young, could be old. So what you're doing is really good, and I hope you keep it up. Oh, thank you, Bob. I, yeah. I mean, you know the benefit for me about doing these interviews is I get to meet some of the most incredible people. Yeah. I'm, I mean, just absolutely incredible people such as yourself who, you know, are willing to share their story uh, about, you know, their journey. And, mm -hmm. and that's so important for people to hear because so many people think that, that their journey, they're the only ones going through it. And that's yeah. not true at all. There yeah. are people all over the world that are going through, may not be the same journey, but it, it could be a similar journey. And uh, there's, cause there's so many different types of cancer, but uh, what's interesting is the way that the people who really wanna live, how they approach it. And, and that's what I look for is the inspiration, you know, what is the person willing to do to get better and to live? 
And so, yeah, that, that's why I am so honored to meet just such phenomenal people, absolutely phenomenal people. And I've met, you know, I've met childhood cancer patients uh, all the way through, you know, all ages, doesn't matter if you're you're black, you're white, you're Asian, you're Hispanic, it affects everybody. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just the world we live in. The world we live in is very toxic and nobody knows who's going to get it or what's going to trigger it. But uh, no, I, I am, and I've said this, people have heard me say this uh, uh, many times, uh, I wouldn't wish cancer on anybody, but for yeah. me, cancer opened my eyes and allowed me to see a world that I wouldn't have experienced if I hadn't gotten cancer. Yeah. What do you call your program? To be your own hero. Be. To your be own. your own hero. The That's number cancer. two, the letter B, your own hero. Oh, and, yeah. That took some thinking to put that together. It's very <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, well, originally it was going to be uh, um, uh, be your own hero, but somebody already took that, so I had to kind of yeah, change like it. it. And I, and, and that's what I look for is people who want to be their own hero, their own advocate for life, you know, and not just following the crowd and not just saying, "Okay, doc, whatever you say, let's let's do it." I think people need to think outside the box uh, and, and look at all options that mm -hmm. they have. And the tendency that the medical system has when you have cancer is they want you to rush into treatment as soon as possible. And, and in some cases that may be true, but that's not true in all cases. And, and I, in my case, I, I did drag my feet and people were getting upset with me, but I wanted to know as much as I possibly could about the journey. And I wanted to know the things that they wanted to do um, for my treatment. So they would give me, for instance, the type of chemo that, that she was going to administer. You know, I took that and I researched it, you know, and I found out information about it that made me feel better about the type of, of chemo. because there's some radical chemos that just that tell you in the description, hey, this thing could kill you. And yeah. I wasn't interested in that. Yeah. You know, I wanted to live. And, and so my oncologist has come to know that uh, I'm serious. And, and I think that's something that people need to impress on their oncologist, that it's a team effort and that uh, the driving force has to be you we yeah. as patients right yep it's it's important to know that let the your doctor your oncologist know that you're a human being and that you wanted to be treated like a human being and not just a number because the medical system is so crowded now and there's so many people in it the doctor only has 10 or 15 minutes with each patient yeah so the question that you have to ask yourself, is that enough time to treat a person who is fighting for their life? Yeah. Good for you. I will, I will, when you have this program ready to go live, just let me know and I will share it with everybody. I would share, I would uh, put my own program out to you. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. In fact, uh, that's going to happen a lot sooner than you think. <laughs> that's okay. I'll be ready. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Bob, so what I'd like you to do is uh, please share your final thoughts and let people know uh, once again how they can contact you because you have a beautiful message and I love what you're doing with Talking with Heroes and uh, yeah, I know you're on LinkedIn because that's how we connected. Yeah. So, yeah, if you could share a little bit about that and, and share mm -hmm. your final thoughts with everyone. Okay, we're on just about all social media. 
Um, uh, LinkedIn is the biggest, close to 10,000 people. Um, uh, but talking with heroes, H E R O E S dot com, is was our beginning, and now we have a nonprofit that Talking with Heroes is now operating under. It's called Thank You for Your Service dot us, and each site is being rebuilt to be a bigger mission. And then, of course, the new me is newme dot com forward slash Bob Callan. Beautiful, Bob. I, I I've really uh, come to appreciate your beautiful smile. And, uh, and I know that we're going to be in touch uh, down the road because I, oh, yeah. I, I just, I just think you're, you're just a, such a wonderful human being, your heart's in the right place. And, uh, you know, what you're doing is absolutely fantastic. So yep. yeah, thank you so much, Bob. And thank you. Same for you. Oh, I would, I would you. know that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And, and what I like, what I always do is, is I always uh, kind of summarize things up. You know, we live in in such a divisive world. In our yeah. world, there's so much going on, and there's so much negativity in our world. And and I want everybody who's listening to this to, you know, make make just a small effort reach out to somebody who, who you haven't touched base with in a while and say, hey, you know, I was thinking about you and, and, and I was worried about you and reach out to people and, and respect people and, and appreciate our fellow human beings because this is such a beautiful, beautiful world and don't let anyone tell you that it's not because, you know, what's going on with our world today is very troubling and if we all make an effort to help make this world better, that's the only way it will become better. That's right. And, and so appreciate your life, appreciate your health, and make the most out of every single day. Uh, I mean, every day I wake up, I open my eyes, and, and I just thank the Lord. Yep. Or the opportunity for another day. Exactly. Make the most, absolute most out of every day, every hour, every minute, and every single breath. Thank you so much for joining Bob and I today on To Be Your Own Hero. Have a great week, and we shall see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you.